always recommend running an up-to-date version of Google Chrome when using Blackboard and Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of Training Talks. Uh, my name is Chris Bird. I'm an LST in the School of Nursing. I'm Rob Bouley, and I'm an LST for the uh, School of Business, Criminal Justice, and Social Work. We're very excited to have everyone join us today, uh, and especially our, our, our latest guest, uh, Dr. Lori Peachy, who is an assistant professor in the School of Nursing at Nipissing University. Uh, we begin today's talk by asking Lori about her experience with the transition from an on-site face-to-face delivery into online uh, for this fall semester and how that's gone for her, um, what type of experiences she's seen, and uh, and 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 how how things have gone for her and her students. Uh, and throughout our conversation, um, while everything kind of sounds rosy and pleasant, uh, there were some struggles um, with the faculty uh, trying to reimagine. Um, they've kind of spent the summer trying to reimagine what uh, clinical um, in virtual space looks like and to make sure that it uh, is not an inferior uh, clinical placement. So they've spent a lot of time working on that. So while it does all sit, sound all rosy and in, in, uh, perfect, uh, there were some uh, hiccups in there that uh, they had to overcome. And, they, and then from the sounds of it, I think you'll, you'll agree it sounds like they're on the right track. We then get into to chatting with her about more of her research interests and uh, experiential learning, as well as the, the virtual simulation technology that they've, they've been utilizing this, this semester. So thank you for joining us today for this new episode of Training Talks. We're uh, looking forward to getting in, getting into things. Thanks for joining us, Laurie, and taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you for the invitation. It's my pleasure to join you today. Lori is a, uh, as mentioned, an assistant professor in the School of Nursing with some unique experiences that we wanted to, to touch on. Um, uh, and, and, and as well, she's one of the, the, the folks who generally who would be teaching in an on-site environment right about now, who has had to move, um, m move her course and, and, and her assessments and everything else onto, or into an online world on Blackboard. Um, so to get started today, Lori, we're just curious to, uh, to hear your take on on how students have reacted to that, your experience, uh, positive experience with this, and uh, and how you think that transition has gone for you. Yeah, so in the world of uh, nursing education, I think we've uh, experienced multiple phase or phases to uh, turning to the virtual environment. And the first phase would have been to hurry everyone home safely, and to have been sent home um, with uh, with current the current progression of, of courses uh, with a finish uh, or finishing online and so uh, those moments are quite different than uh, than our fall semester I would say um, students were quickly um, uh, turned into the or turned to they quickly turned to the virtual environment for uh, weeks uh, the final weeks of their semester and into their exam period and so as the most of the world and most of our nation experienced a stay at home order uh, for public health measures some of our nursing students because they have uh, prior long-standing relationships with healthcare institutions or healthcare um, settings, uh, they were being called back into the setting to see if they can manage some hours. And so we saw our students managing not only a, um, uh, a safe um, uh, conversion into the, the online world, but also uh, managing uh, being at home with their families, sometimes with their children, and um, and taking on employment. So, uh, and a, a few of our students have uh, acquired the COVID-19 virus through uh, their work during the early weeks of the pandemic. And so, I think it, it would, I would need to emphasize that our students have, um, have gone through a very different experience potentially than uh, than other students from other programs. Absolutely, that does sound very unique in a lot of ways and especially since like you said they're they are working they're they are trying to help out during this pandemic and, and being exposed to those types of things can be uh, can be an, an additional challenge that really uh, really no one really wants uh, especially or no one expected especially you know, while doing their education I would imagine so it's uh, it's an interesting take to 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 hear that. I, I actually hadn't even 
I, I personally hadn't heard of any students being affected by it, but uh, but it's interesting to hear that uh, we have had that that occurrence. So, um, wow, that's that's something. Next, I had next. a student from one of my classes that was um, employed at the early uh, healthcare um, long term care setting that had uh, an out break and um, and that she felt that if she didn't uh, accept employment that uh, many of those uh, older adults would have spent um, long days with with uh, with no staff or short staff or with uh, no with visitation restrictions and so uh, many of our students felt um, compelled to be out there and, and lend a hand in any way, shape or form that they could while finishing up their semester and preparing for exams. And so I, I can speak uh, to, you know, some of the strategies that I adopted in some of the courses I had been teaching at that point in time, but they are very different than, uh, so the strategies that I employed were very much different than the fall um, startup. We understand that you're doing some work with um, virtual simulations um, and, and we're, we're curious to know what that looks like, kind of how the students are interacting with that, how that's going. Um, yes, thank you. I before the before you know pre-pandemic, um, I had been uh, involved with uh, virtual simulation and the development of virtual simulation games. So, uh, putting in some gamification in professional education and looking at um, at the choices that we make as nurses. So, in clinical judgment, in critical thinking, looking at scenarios, but uh, using some some gaming to replace some of the uh, uh, textbook readings that are traditionally traditionally done in, in the classroom setting or even in the simulation labs and doing so through moving screens and selecting, you know, what is the appropriate choice in this circumstance. And if it's not the appropriate choice, this is what the outcome would be. And uh, with uh, gaming, uh, there are many options where uh, the student has an, an avatar, uh, moves through screens and selects the correct, it can be the correct, uh, the incorrect, or it can be the kind of halfway in between where it's the the most correct based on best practice guidelines. So they can have um, scoring according to uh, their, their selection of different options. And so the COVID-19 pandemic has given us an opportunity as nursing educators to use virtual simulation as not only part of preparatory readings and replacing um, the textbook readings or the readings of clinical practice guidelines, but to replace some of the, um, or to return to clinical practicum in a safer uh, manner where both the vulnerable population is not placed at risk with extra um, healthcare providers um, preserving our capacity in the healthcare setting and also protecting the health of our future workforce. So protecting the health of our uh, nursing students as well in, in their learning environment of clinical practicum or clinical practice skills. That sounds amazing. I, I mean, I, are the students enjoying that, that kind of interaction? Uh, yes. There's some so learning they, on that? <laughs> Um, where it has been used sparingly or as a, an enhancement, it is now in the winter term, we have planned for it to become sort of the, the safe return to clinical practicum courses in a, in a, uh, until there's a safe return to, to the real face-to-face -face setting. And so we've had a lot of rich conversations about, um, about the technical skills of nursing, you know, whether you apply oxygen, um, for instance, and what that may mean to a person's uh, vital signs, but most importantly, the, the human interaction that um, that you can't get if you're gaming. And so some of the students are uh, really exploring in our debrief when we have a moment in the classroom where we can talk about their gaming they come back to the uh what they would have said or what they would have um uh done to make the patient feel and their family feel comfortable and so um it's interesting that the the gaming has been a success but it has also created conversation about being more relational in our practice and what that can look like and and uh, that they miss that aspect of being with people. 
Yeah, that's, that's really that's really neat. <laughs> I think there's always a portion of education where well, you touched on it just now is that there has to be some actual interaction. Sometimes technology can't always replace maybe a face-to-face -face setting or a clinical setting. Virtual virtual simulations are great, don't get me wrong, but like yeah, like you said, there's always some part of learning that that should involve that face-to-face -face stuff. So it's interesting that you you noted uh, you noted that. Um, I think at the same time, it's given us an opportunity to uh, present them with situations that they would not see face to face. Um, for my area of practice, for instance, in uh, in the perinatal setting, most of my work as an obstetrical nurse is very uh, normal and natural and uh, a celebration of normal things like childbirth. Um, and so there's no real... Um, uh, Grey's Anatomy moment in uh, in what they expect when they go to the face to face setting, and so a lot of again my work involves communication and um, caring and being compassionate and and reporting clinical findings to the rest of the team. However, in the use of virtual simulation, there the scenarios that we unfold are all exciting emergencies and urgent situations that they most likely will never see in the clinical setting, uh, but it gives them an opportunity to navigate through uh, an emergency in a technical way. And then it also creates a lot of conversation on this may never happen to you, but if it does, this, these, are, this, these are the clinical practice guidelines that you would utilize and these are the policies and procedures. And so I, I think it's a blend of, um, of uh, a good combination of, um, of, ha of cr uh, creating or fostering discussions in what tends to really happen in the clinical setting, but also you can navigate or you can immerse in, um, in worst case scenarios without harming anyone. And so it's, it's, I would say, the best of both worlds if you can use, utilize the face-to-face -face with uh, a virtual simulated environment. Well, the debriefing portion of virtual simulation has been our learning curve in our uh, faculty and student population in our School of Nursing. And so to effectively debrief um, a gaming or a virtual simulation, uh, you need a skilled faculty that has, uh, has, has the knowledge and the training and the, um, the support in place to be able to uh, create that, that safe environment. We talk about psychological safety, and I think that's a, that's a concept that we should be utilizing, we, utilizing experiential learning, but that we should also bring back into the classroom setting after um, when, once we return and that psychological safety means that in our debrief if you um, if you uncovered something that was really wacky in your in your virtual simulation that no one should feel embarrassed or no one should feel like they can't discuss something in uh, in the virtual simulation space and so psychological safety increases uh, the um, fidelity of the learning environment as students and faculty you know, increase their level of trust, uh, the level of realism increases. That's amazing. Um, and one of the other sessions we're going to be doing this season um, on, our, on our talks is uh, we're going to be talking to two instructors from social work. And we're going to be talking about trauma-informed pedagogy. So I think that that links, I think, really, really well with you, what you're talking about there. Yeah, I just wanted to sort of loop back to what you had mentioned earlier. And what I was talking about earlier as well, in terms of uh, the, the the benefits of the virtual setting versus the in-person setting, you sort of touched on it a bit, Laurie, where the virtual setting also allows for different experiences that the the in-person setting might not allow for, um, and, and vice versa. And I think, like you said, the combination of having both of those available and then being able to have the online platform to go back and discuss as a group those those situations with everyone i think that's really uh that's really something that's interesting about the the online side of things because i i don't know how often students have a chance as a group to discuss their experiences in clinical um but but i think um being able to do it in a, in a form that way um on blackboard or using a discussion form is, is is really beneficial or at least it would be for someone like me who's able to go through and I'm a visual learner. So seeing all these experiences, reading through them would be, would be uh, very, very beneficial for someone like me, for sure. 
I also spoke at length with some of my um, with some of the groups that I've been facilitating about some of the skills that that they may not uh, um, know that they're building that they'll eventually take into the healthcare setting and into their professional practice, such as being, you know, being in an unexpected environment in an unprecedented um, time in in our in our lifetime, and also, um, you know, increasing the need for communication uh, in this virtual space, in our listening skills, um, our our constant. Need need for um, for knowing uh, is also uh, at a, a pretty high level of discomfort for nursing students. So what I mean by that is that uh, sometimes we don't know what next week looks like. And uh, sometimes we don't know what um, the virtual environment will bring uh, next semester. And so some of the messiness that um, I call it messiness, but nurses generally don't like the the not knowing and the the messiness of um of uh what we are living and in reality being a nurse is messy and so you don't always know what you know what clients you'll be looking after or what your workload or what your assignment will be so we've had really rich opportunities to connect and to talk about how these skills that they're building through the pandemic will have uh, meaning in um, in their in their nursing practice, and they've been really open to uh, to those opportunities. I'm glad to hear the students are are becoming engaged and 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 utilizing the tools that are available for them during this time. I think. Uh, I mean, if if they didn't want to do that, they could they could certainly take the courses at a different time. But the fact that they are they are engaged and 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 wanting to to uh, to work through this with you in in that virtual virtual area is is great. I think that's uh, and I think it's something that's going to benefit not only the student but but also you as an instructor because it gives you a different experience as well, um, both in terms of teaching but also in terms of like I said the situational side of things where. You, you might might come up with ideas or discussions that wouldn't normally pop up in a, in, in an otherwise on-site environment. So that's really interesting, uh, and thanks for sharing that with us. So I, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really excited too to to hear what you've been saying and and see when the pandemic's over or we go back to a like a more normal face-to-face -face offering of courses. What look what the transition looks like if, if anything comes forward from this or you know what what balance or or whatnot is developed from it, it i think it's a kind of exciting times for like for advancing education in a lot of ways absolutely yeah well i i think that was all we really wanted to chat with you about today laurie i uh thank you for a lot of the stuff you touched on was not even stuff i even considered us talking about today so it was uh uh, a lot of those things are very enlightening to both Rob and I, um, and, and very important things to consider, um, especially in the time we're in and, and what everyone's going through. Um, I think the most important thing for, for everyone sort of to keep in mind is, is a couple of things. We're not the only institution going through this right now, uh, but also we need, to, we need to be flexible and use this as a learning experience because of, of what we touched on is that there are things that are happening right now that we would have never considered having to do or do or to, to do in our courses that all of a sudden we're being forced to and we're seeing, hey, this is actually working. You know, students are engaged, students are participating. It is possible to do this using different tools. It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, sort of the not antiquated, but it doesn't have to be the way we've always been doing it. And I think sometimes we get uh, we get stuck in ruts like that. Um, and, it, and it's important to, to be able to adapt and to, to change. And I think uh, from the sounds of things, the, the nursing students have been doing a great job of that. And, and I'm very happy to hear it. And I'm especially happy to hear that that students are um, are doing well through these times. It, it, I didn't know, like I said, that, that a couple of students had, had been inflicted with, with COVID-19 um, while they're trying to do, you know, trying to balance school and work is one thing. But doing that when you have uh, the risk of a, a, a disease, uh, or sorry, a virus um, 
right at, you know, when you're working in that environment, I couldn't imagine the amount of stress those students would be going through with, with something like that. So thanks, thanks for talking about that. I think that's important. And, uh, and, and as well as your research, it's very interesting to see uh, where you're going. And, and I think I can speak for Rob and myself when, when I say that we're, we're excited to see the outcomes and, uh, and what you're able to come up with, um, because it sounds like you're, uh, you're, you're developing some great things and some great ideas, and uh, we appreciate you chatting with chatting about those things today. Thank you. I'm I've been very inspired with what our um, our nursing students have uh, have been challenged with, and their response to uh, to the pandemic has been amazing. Um, they some of my past. Um, uh, work has been on developing clinical imagination. And so being imaginative uh, is, is the key to, um, to uh, coming out of this with, uh, with a, a meaningful experience. And so I, I see students uh, doing exactly that, being imaginative, uh, being uh, flexible and um, being um, being persistent with their desire to be in the profession, which is excellent. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Larry. We always recommend running an up-to-date version of Google Chrome when using Blackboard and Blackboard Collaborate Ultra.